I used to be a writer for Alex Jones about 20 years ago, so no axe to grind here, but we have to set the biblical record straight on what happens when you die. Here's what Alex said recently. Because it's been written. Ben Shapiro, I saw a clip of him the other day. I didn't believe it, so I watched this whole podcast from years ago. That you have a soul. That you live after death. The Old Testament says it over 300 times. The New Testament over 300 times. So are there 300 texts in the Old Testament and 300 more texts in the New Testament that teach that we are alive while dead, that we live after death, that we have an immortal soul? 20 Bible facts, rapid fire, write down the texts, study them for yourselves. Don't take my word for it, take God's word for it. Let's begin by giving glory to God, who alone has immortality. God alone is immortal, the Bible says. That means I'm not immortal. My soul, my spirit, me, I don't have immortality. The Bible says that we are to seek for immortality, which implies we don't yet have it. The Bible says that the soul that sins, it shall die. The soul dies in the day that you eat of this fruit. You shall surely die. The wages of sin is death. So we don't have immortality as sinners. That's a blasphemous claim. But when we seek for immortality, we will find it. But it's only at the resurrection that we will be clothed with immortality. We will have eternal life in heaven, in resurrected bodies. So what is it like while you're dead? Well, the Bible uses the word sleep. Many, 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 many times it describes death as a sleep. The Bible explicitly says that the dead do not praise God. The dead do not hope. The dead do not give thanks. The dead are silent. The dead know nothing. That was Martin Luther's favorite text on the state of the dead. The book of Job tells us something that's very important prophetically for the deceptions that are coming our way. It says that the dead do not return to their house. The apparitions, the hauntings, the appearances of dead loved ones or saints or Mary, watch out for that. The Bible says explicitly they do not do that. And where would most of us have the righteous saints like King David who repented and was a man after God's own heart? Of course, they're already in heaven while dead, right? The Bible says specifically that David has not yet gone to heaven. He will. We all, all of our dead loved ones will be raised in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. This mortal will put on immortality and then we will be absent from this body in which we've lived in this fallen world and we will be present with the Lord. Now, you heard earlier that the soul dies. Well, what about the spirit? Is that immortal? Is my breath immortal? Spirit and breath, same word in the Bible. Well, Ecclesiastes tells us that our breath is no different than that of animals. So if animals have immortal spirits that live on for eternity, then maybe we do, but we don't see that taught in the Bible. Now, to understand what a soul actually is, you go to the Genesis account of God making Adam. It says, Adam became a living soul. God made Adam out of dust, he breathed into him breath, and he became a soul. So you are a soul. It's not that I have a soul, something that leaves my body and floats off into heaven when I die. That's not taught in the Bible. The soul dies, we read earlier. The spirit returns to God who gave it. The breath, God takes that breath. When I breathe my last, there is no soul. You're asleep in the grave awaiting the resurrection. And how do we comfort those who've lost loved ones? How are we ourselves comforted when we've lost loved ones who've died? The Bible says specifically, it says, comfort one another with these words. And then the Apostle Paul is explaining the resurrection. When Lazarus died and his sisters Mary and Martha were grieving, how did Martha find comfort? She says, I know that my brother will rise again at the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said he will rise again. And then he made Lazarus rise temporarily, of course. He didn't receive a new glorified body and go to heaven. But that's the comfort. The resurrection, not he's in a better place. Nobody said that in the Bible to comfort anybody who was grieving. 
because they're not yet in a better place. They know nothing. The dead know nothing. They're unconscious. Their next conscious thought after breathing their last and dying will be the second coming of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Is that not good news? By the way, there are many resurrections in the Bible that aren't the great resurrection that is to come, where somebody just came back to life and lived the rest of their life until they died again. There are a dozen of them, not a single one has the person coming back from the dead explaining what the afterlife was like and what it was like in heaven. Sorry, after death. Sorry, heaven is for real. I know you guys mean well, but it is not biblical. Think about Lazarus. He had been in heaven for four days when he was resurrected. Why did you bring me back here? He would have said, right? Jesus told Lazarus, come forth from the tomb, not come down from heaven. Now, before we continue, I actually recommend you pause the video here, review the dozens of texts that we've looked at so far, and know for yourself what the Bible teaches on this. Because what you're about to encounter is a challenge. It's going to make the Bible seem like it contradicts itself. So as we resume now, pause now. Now we're going to ask the question, what about the thief on the cross? Didn't Jesus tell the thief on the cross, you're going to be with me today in paradise on Good Friday when they were being crucified? Well, if that's the case, then the Bible does contradict because we've just seen a, a voluminous testimony in God's Word that they wouldn't be alive while dead in heaven. Notice that the thief asks Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So first of all, the thief didn't expect to be in heaven that very day. Now, when Jesus appears after the resurrection uh, in John 20, he says that he has not yet been to heaven. So that would make Jesus a liar if he told the thief, I'm going to be with you in paradise today on Friday, and then two days later on Sunday, he says, I haven't yet been there, then he lied to that thief. Jesus does not lie. The Bible says God cannot lie. So how do we make sense of this? Well, the, the commas, the punctuation in, in our English Bibles were not in the original. So the translators placed the comma somewhere where they thought it should go, where it has Jesus saying, I tell you the truth, comma. Today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Well, the comma wasn't in there. I tell you the truth today. You will be with me in paradise. Makes the Bible consistent, harmonious all the way through. If you're going to put a comma in there, put it after the word today, or you have a Bible that contradicts itself. And are we to take the parable of the rich man and Lazarus literally? That when you die, the saints are, are brought to Abraham's bosom and, and placed upon to reside on the chest hairs of an oversized giant Abraham. Nobody takes this literally. You don't hear that at funerals because that's not a literal portrayal of the state of the dead. It is borrowing mythology that was common during the day to teach a different lesson entirely in that parable. How about souls? Are they trapped under the altar in heaven crying out in a symbolic book in Revelation. This is no more literal than Abel's blood crying out from the ground in Genesis. The souls under the altar, cry, altar crying out for justice and vengeance from God in that symbolic apocalyptic book of Revelation, not to be taken literally any more than the parable of the rich man and Lazarus is taken literally like the talking trees in the book of Judges, the parable of the trees. We can't have in the same Bible, the dead know nothing and God alone is immortal, while at the same time we have immortality living under an altar or on a bosom. So the Bible does not contradict. Symbolism, parables, you understand. So where did this vast deception come from that has penetrated almost all of Christianity for nearly 2,000 years? It came in very early. In the early centuries, Platonic philosophers became church fathers who were godly and great and leaders in their own way, many of them martyrs, but they came from the schools of Greek philosophy where they had this notion of dualism, that there is flesh and there is immortal spirit or soul that can leave your body upon death. It is not biblical. It came out of Greek schools of philosophy. And so we can just simply end with where did this lie all come from? The first lie ever told in the history of this world was the serpent saying to Eve that as a sinner, as a person who eats of this fruit, you will not surely die. God says that the wages of sin is death. The sinner dies. The soul dies. Satan says, you will not surely die. You are immortal. Blasphemy. Thank you.